friends, good morning. Welcome to yet another new episode of Daybreak. Psalm 33 verse 21 says, For our hearts rejoice in the Lord because we trust in His holy name. So let's rejoice in Him by glorifying His holy name through this song. Wasn't that a beautiful and a blissful experience? Certain anecdotes have a ring of truth to it. So let's listen to this anecdote and understand what we can take from it. A priest one day went to visit the jail 
to meet a violent criminal who had been condemned to death with the hope of converting him and bringing him into confession with repentance. As the priest tried to intervene and talk to the criminal, the criminal was totally closed at heart. He refused to listen to the words of the priest and he totally closed himself to what the priest said. Finally, as the priest was getting ready to leave, he requested the criminal for a favor. He told him, I have just this one favor from you. The criminal, though was very, very upset with the priest and wanted to get rid of him, said, Okay, I will do what you want. Tell me. And the priest said, Shall we say together one Hail Mary? And holding his hands, both of them would start reciting the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. They had not even finished the first sentence when the criminal began to have tears in his eyes. His face would go pale, but the priest would continue to say the prayer, the Hail Mary. At the end of the prayer, the criminal was in full tears and he would request the priest for a confession. The words, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, had a deep impact on the life of this criminal and he would experience the mercy of God in his life and would request to have repentance in life. That is the power of the intercession of our blessed Mother Mary. The Gospel of John chapter 2 verse 1 to 9, we have the incident of the wedding at Cana. Verse 3, we have Mother Mary who goes to Jesus and says, They have no wine. These were the words of intercession that Mary placed before her son, Jesus. The wedding family was in a great deal of tension and worry. Wine had run short. And in a Jewish context, if wine was not sufficient in a wedding context, it would mean a lot of humiliation for the family. And so Mother Mary intervenes and intercedes to her son. They have no wine. This is what Mother Mary does in our own lives as well. As we move ahead with our personal family lives, there are moments in our life when we also run short of wine. The wine of joy, the wine of peace in life, the wine of convictions in our faith. In all such moments, when we place our trust in Mother Mary, she would go before her son and place the same request. They have no wine. And we know what would Jesus do in that context. He would transform those jars filled with waters into the best wine and the family would have a joy which would be overflowing. When you and I go seeking the help of Mother Mary to Jesus, that's exactly what God does in our lives. He will give us the best wine that is possible only by Him. Are we today short of wine in our lives? Then the Lord is asking us, seek the help of my mother who would intercede and pray for all of us so that we can have the best wine in life. There are times when we go through hard moments in life. We also meet people who are not willing to let go of their wrong convictions in life. In all such moments, let's seek the help of our Blessed Mother Mary. Call out to her and say, Hail Mary, full of grace. When we do that, surely God's grace and mercy will fill our lives and we would be able to help others and we ourselves will be able to understand the depths of God's love in our lives. May this day be a day when we live holding the hands of our Blessed Mother and going closer to her Son and our Saviour, Jesus. May the name of the Lord be ever praised. Live Jesus. 
I am sure the message would have enlightened you. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. November, as daylight shrinks in the northern hemisphere, and frost turns vegetation brown, the church leads us to confront the mystery of death. These days remind us that love is stronger than death. That Christ's death for us means that our beloved deceased, who believed in Christ, are very much alive. They may be among those whose lungs breathe the exhilarating air of heaven, and whose eyes gaze upon the glory of God. In this case, they help us through their prayers. Our loving intercession can hasten the purification and preparation necessary for the full enjoyment of their inheritance. All Souls Day embraces all of the faithful deceased who are in the process of achieving perfect communion with God. Today, we pray for the purification of the souls in purgatory, remembering those who have gone before us and entreating the Lord to take them into heaven. All Souls Day is an opportunity to remember deceased loved ones and honor the one who loved them into life. And receive them in death. All Souls Day reminds us that the veil between this life and the next is often quite thin. Our prayers radiate beyond this lifetime, bringing greater light to the post-mortem journeys of our loved ones. On the other hand, in the interdependence of life, the prayers and energies of deceased beloved friends and family members may support us on earthly pilgrimages. The Catholic Church has always been very reserved in this teaching about the mystery of life after death, including the mystery of purgatory. What Church teaches us is Christ's death and resurrection, one eternal life for everyone. Yet the fruit of His redeeming work needs to be personally appropriated. Each person must say yes to Christ. And yield to the liberating power of His grace, which progressively breaks the sin's power and heals sin's wounds. Everyone is obliged to actively participate in this process and to renounce all sin, great or small. God, through His Church, provides all the means of grace necessary to facilitate this purification and healing. All Souls Day. Provide us with the opportunity to give thanks as well as forgive those imperfect but loving persons who shaped our lives. The feast of All Souls and the month of November is a source of consolation for each of us. If our hearts are broken and suffering about the loss of loved ones, or if we are dealing with unresolved issues about goodbyes that were not said, peace that was not made. Gratitude that was not expressed. Let us ask the faithful departed to intercede for us and for our own peace. The consoling doctrine of the communion of saints allows us to feel ever close to those who have died, and gives us much hope in moments of despair and sadness. May we spend our earthly pilgrimage filling our minds with the thoughts of heaven, so that when we finally cross over into eternal life. We shall be united with our Lord in heavenly abode. Therefore, let us remember, death does not end the human adventure, nor does it terminate God's love for us. The afterlife is a time of personal and relational evolution. We pause today on this, the feast day of All Souls, to remember those who went before us, marked by the sign of faith. Together in the communion of the saints, our Lord and our Blessed Mother, we pray for their purification and eternal joy in the light of heaven. As James one twenty two says, "Do not deceive yourselves by just listening to the word of God, but do what it asks you to do." So let us also listen to the word of God and obey it. 
as we listen to this promise of the day let us contemplate and meditate on it praise the lord dear friends welcome to the daily bread a daily reflection on the word of god basing on the scriptural passage suggested by the liturgical celebration of the day of the latin church today is the 2nd of november and this is the day we commemorate all the souls of the dead the bible passage we read is from the gospel according to matthew chapter 11 verses 25 to 30 at that time jesus declared i thank the father lord of heaven and earth that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the babes ya father for such was thy gracious will all things have been delivered to me by my father and no one knows the son except the father and no one knows the father except the son and any one to whom the son chooses to reveal him come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light this is the word of the lord praise the lord dear friends today the universal church remembers the dead the souls of the dead the november the second it's a great feast when we think of all the people who have gone ahead of us that we know remains a mystery and many consider it as a tragedy the tragic end of life and what happens after death for many today there's nothing after death with the death everything is over so you enjoy today that eat and drink today because tomorrow you die that's a type of philosophy we call charvaga or hedonism or epicureanism but most of the people in ancient times as well as today most of the religions think about a survival after death what happens some think we continue through the rebirth and doing penance for the sins you have committed in one birth you do the second and finally you reach moksha the union with the ultimate some others think that you are being tortured or so there are various types of thinking and if you go to egypt and cairo you see the pyramid the great pyramids of the third millennium bc 2600 or something and these pyramids are eternal so to say reminders of the life after death they believe the person who is buried there he goes his soul comes and comes back and we remember him so there is a remembrance of the dead in every religion and in christianity when come to the bible what does the bible say about life after death in the beginning there was nothing to say about the life after death it is as if an eternal sleep they know nothing they feel nothing they continue a kind of uh, unconscious existence or survival that was the beginning no resurrection that's how the problem of job why job is so much trouble there's a drama about the life and the prosperity of the wicked and the suffering of the just so grappling with this problem where is justice if the death is the end of life then where is god's justice job doesn't find an answer so gradually there develops a thinking a revelation that the death is not the end and by the time of jesus there was two different schools of opinion one supported by the pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead and life eternal and the official class the leading class the sadducees the sadducees were the priestly class the followers or that the descendants of sadoc the high priest of david and solomon the sadducees they did not believe in the resurrection or the existence of soul or anything except god that is invisible so jesus was asked about the resurrection and jesus taught what the resurrection is what will happen so that death is not the end of life death is the beginning of a new life and all those who die die in the in the body 
but they are not entered. That is not the end of it. And the church be, um, believes and teaches, basing on the words of Jesus, that at the moment of death, every individual person will be judged by God. Stand before God, the judge, and he'll be judged that very moment according to what he has lived in the past. To his words and deeds will come to him, and before God, the decision is made where to go. Either to eternal life with God, if you have been pleasing to God and filled with God's love, or to eternal damnation, go away from me, you doers of iniquity, or a purgatory that is being a time of purification or growth in the love, being perfected. That is the end. So from this, later comes the universal judgment presented in many chapters, especially in chapter 25 of Matthew, where at the end of the world there will be resurrection of the bodies and the judgment of all. So those who are already been judged, will be, their judgment will be confirmed and publicly announced and then remains only one or two stages, either with God or away from God. And so now when we are alive here, we can help the people who are in the process of purification, that's what you call the purgatory. So yesterday we saw there is a union between the three parts of the mystical body, that is the triumphant church, the saints in heaven, and the struggling church is struggling with the evil in this world, the, the present day church in the world, and the suffering church, that is the purgatory. So there is a communion between all. And so today on this day of commemoration, we have to do two things. First, we pray for those who have gone ahead of us, remember what they have done, what they have been for us, and remember their goodness and thank God for them. That's the first thing. Second, we should also remember that we also have to die. We also will die. This earth is not a permanent place for us. We have to go. But remember, death is not the end. Death is only a transition. Death is the gateway to the eternal life. So we have to remember that we are mortals and we are rendered immortal, immortal soul. It will continue. As I was, we were studying Latin in the primary class of the Latin Final Seminary, the teacher asked us to read the palm. It's not, I'm not speaking of palmistry. So if you look in, my, in the hand, and then my hand is very clear, there is an M in the hand on both, both hands, both palms. And they told me, remember this, read this, and these are two words. Memento moris. Remember, you will die. So when you look into your palms, remember that you will die. And remember, death is not the end. Death is only entering a new life. And there is our Father waiting, Jesus our Lord, Mary our Mother, and all the companions, saints, all waiting for us. And they will tell us, welcome home. So death should be an occasion for celebration, not of weeping. But we have to live in a way that the death will be a transition from this to eternal joy. And for that place, let us ask the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we celebrate today, or remember today the saints and all the dead, all those who have gone ahead of us, and pray for those who are under purification, help us to live in such a way that you, we also will be with you purified already here through our suffering and through our deeds and as our deeds of justice that we may be considered worthy to be with you forever and ever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we've heard the word of God, let's meditate upon it and let's glorify the Lord with this song.
I wish you all an amazing and a spirit-filled day.